On Larry King Now basketball legend Lisa Leslie on her Naismith Hall of Fame induction. I am just now five years retired and so you come up at your fifth year and a lot of people don't really get in on their fifth year so I was pretty excited and very humbled by I mean look at all the legends that are part of the Naismith. On the current state of the WNBA. There's, I've heard talks of expansion. I'm not sure uh, which direction they want to go in that yet, but we have seen that there's been a lot of success for the teams that are outside of the NBA market, such as Chicago and the Mohegan Sun, who are in Connecticut. Plus, not Doc Rivers and the Clippers? Uh, I would never say no. I, I definitely think that I have some knowledge of the game that would definitely help their post game and post players and footwork and how to defend uh, offensively and defensively. Um, for sure, I could help that team immediately. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest, Lisa Leslie, of the unbelievably talented professional basketball player, talk show host, author, entrepreneur. She does everything. Everything. Two-time WNBA champion, three-time WNBA MVP, four-time Olympic gold medalist, and the first woman ever to dunk in a WNBA game. Currently, she is co-hosting CBS Sports Network syndicated talk show, We Need to Talk. And she's working alongside Boston Market for the Log Out, Look Up campaign, a worthwhile campaign. I have kids. Lisa will be inducted into the coveted Naismith ba Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in September, part of the 2015 class. How many women are in the Hall of Fame? That's a great question. I have no idea have how no many idea. women are in the Hall of Fame. Can't be many. Well, there's quite a few, I'd say. Um, I know of Ann Myers and a lot of the legends who've come before me, Cheryl Miller, of course, um, Teresa Edwards, Dawn Staley. I could probably name about 10 or 15, but total, I have no idea. How were you informed? I was called that, uh, actually they had to leave a message because they called me a few times. I didn't answer unknown numbers, you know, I just don't answer <laughs> them. So they left me a message and said that um, I have been nominated in the 2015 class. And I am just now five years retired and so you come up at your fifth year and a lot of people don't really get in on their fifth year. So I was pretty excited and very humbled by, I mean, look at all the legends that are part of the Naismith. Oh. It's a great Same as baseball, you have to be yes. out five years. Yes, so it's a great class. You're never coming back, right? No. <laughs> I will not return to the court. Uh, I have two children. It? No, no, kids are, are quite, they keep me busy. I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old son, so now they're playing sports, so I live vicariously through them and watching them. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Compton, California. I'm from Compton. I lived in Compton and Inglewood. I went to USC. Are your parents tall? Yes, my mom is 6'3", my father was 6'4", so, uh, you know, I'm 6'5". Did you <laughs> shoot up or did you gradually grow? I've grown all my life consistently. In second grade, in fact, uh, my teacher called my mom and said, are you aware that Lisa's head and shoulders taller than everyone in the class, including me? <laughs> so uh, I've been tall since I was a kid, just like my daughter. So it was natural to come to basketball, right? Well. I actually, Larry, started playing basketball in the seventh grade, which is pretty late. I was 12 years old. The only reason why I began playing basketball was because there was a girl named Sharon who was very popular and all the kids knew her name, ninth grader. Uh, she was remarkable on the court. I had no interest in basketball, but I had an interest in being popular. For whatever reason, I wanted people to know my name <laughs> like any other teenager. And I began playing basketball. Took to it right away? Um, I did. Initially, when I started, I was, I'm was i originally left-handed. I write with my left hand, but all the girls were right-handed. So I thought, gosh, I want to be, you know, I don't want to be singled out as a left-hander. So I changed hands my second day of tryouts and became a right-hander and played right-handed ever since. But you're still right-lefty? I'm right-lefty. I play tennis with my left, everything. But you, everything, but you... But, but my jumper has always been right-handed. Well, now, inside the paint, of course, depending on where the defense is, because I'm ambidextrous, I could go left or right, and that was turned out to be an advantage later. And when I was a kid, they tried to change left-handed people into yes. right handed because it's a right-handed world. It's a right-handed world. Larry, there, it's a right-handed world. Yeah, the left-handed scissors, everything. nothing. Yeah, scissors. Check right? marks go the Golf. other way. Yeah. Golf. You okay. understand me. <laughs> You're a part owner of the L.A. Sparks now, right? I was a co-owner for the L.A. Sparks uh, in 2010 once I retired. Um, that has since been taken over with uh, Magic Johnson, and that group has stepped in, and I'm so no longer an owner anymore. No? 
Yeah, Feel bad about that? Oh, no, no, it's been a great business move. I'm actually working on my second book now. It's called From the Court to the Boardroom. So um, it has been a great experience being a co-owner and one of the first players to do it. What's with the WNBA? Are they struggling? No, not at all. Did you hear? We have a new television deal uh, with ESPN, the L.A. Sparks with Time Warner. So I'm television is that, great, first. yes. A lot of talent. A lot of talent. And uh, is it the television expand deal really too? helps. There's, I've heard talks of expansion. I'm not sure uh, which direction they want to go in that yet, but we have seen that there's been a lot of success for the teams that are outside of the NBA market, such as Chicago and the Mohegan Sun, who are in Connecticut. When's the pay going to go up? Yeah, no, that's a whole other question. Well, I've uh, always challenged them about the pay. You know, one NBA player's salary is the salary of pretty much the whole WNBA. So it would be nice to see the salaries go up, but you also can't argue when you look at the American population and the average salary, salary at between thirty and $60,000 when you, these players are making six figures. Yeah. Laurel Ritchie, the president of the mm -hmm. WNBA, said they're planning to expand. I would love for them to expand, and I would also love to see salaries go up as sponsorships go up. But, um, you know, it's, uh, you, it's tough to compare the WNBA to the NBA. The NBA is 50 years older than the WNBA. And so we're talking about, you know, a, a, a league that's 19 years young. And so we're making strides in the right directions, and we want to have longevity. That's the most important thing. The staying power has really been great with the television sponsorship as well as corporate sponsorship, and as we all know, with fan sponsors. Do you, are there cities you think should be in? Huh, if I had to say a city, it would be nice to see uh, Florida get a, a team somewhere, uh, maybe in a, some of the smaller markets like a Tampa or Orlando had a team before. They didn't have as much interest, but I think Tampa, maybe some smaller markets would be great. And then Texas, obviously San Antonio's done great, but Houston, which was one of the milestone teams that started out the Houston Comets, it would be great to see a team get back into that market. What was your USC experience like? Well, I had a good time at USC. Um, your home obviously, school. yeah, I was home in LA. Uh, my 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 undergrad is in communications because I always went to go into some form of broadcasting. Um, so USC was a good fit for me. However, I did have the experience. My senior year, my coach got fired. Um, she was. She was really pushing for equality and pay, and the men's coach and the women's coach did not get paid the same. And that was really an eye-opening experience for me. I never really realized the inequality, inequality that women experienced until my senior year. Um, so that was a difficult time, but we got through it, and I learned a lot about, you know, this fight that we have as women and trying to find our space in the workforce as well as in sports. It's been a battle, but I, I've been fighting a good fight. I'm with you. <laughs> After the break, are women in sports, you think, getting the final respect they deserve? And Lisa will weigh in on girl power movements. Don't click away. We're back with the great Lisa Leslie. She'll be in the Naismith Hall of Fame come September. Great honor for a great player and a great lady, too. Thank you. Okay, women in sports, the girl power movement. What is that? Well, we got a national team <laughs> win in the World Cup. More interest in the girl, Ronda Rousey. Yes. It's been such a great year because usually women get the spotlight and sort of this due, their due, if you will, only in Olympic years. But we've had such an amazing time with the women's soccer team coming off a great win. Ronda Rousey, I should say. But it, it's not just the win. It was the fact that they were celebrated when they came home in New York. There was a parade for them. What a thing. Now, I've won four Olympic gold medals, and uh, three of them were won outside of our country. And we came home to crickets. <laughs> there was no celebration happening for us. Oprah did have us on her show once, so I shouldn't say that. But it's been great that the American fans have really celebrated women in sports. Serena doing her Serena Slam, and hopefully she can win the U.S. Open and finish that off. She's been so strong and great. And then when you look at Ronda Rousey, who has, I mean, really taken the world by storm in her physical ability to take down women in seconds now. Um, I don't know. I think commercials are happening longer than her fights. But um, it's been great to see what she's done. And then the elegance and the beauty in which she, she carries with that, I think. We have a tough position. The dichotomy of, of being athletic and physical and being women and being beautiful and trying to be pleasing on both of those uh, fronts has been difficult. But I think the girl power movement is just the fact that men are open to s recognizing the talents of women, but not based on their gender. You have Becky Hammond, who's now the assistant coach, 
and the NBA for the Spurs who just won the Summer League. So excited for Becky because, you know, Oprah said it best. It's not just about, you know, when preparation and opportunity comes together, it equals success. And we've been prepared, you know, playing sports and having the if you will, the experience under our belt, but having the opportunity, these are things that are new for a lot of women and we're breaking down doors. Girl power. By the way, I think she's gonna be the head coach of San Antonio. You think so? Yeah, I, he loves her, the coach. Yeah. And he'll select the next one, I think, and I, they rave about her. And now Nancy Lieberman's gonna be one of the coaches of the Kings. Yes. And there's a, they're in the NFL now. And in the NFL. Arizona, what do you make of this? Well, I just make that we are in a time of change and we we have access to so much information, whether it's through social media, where we have a time where we've seen the Confederate flag come down. We've seen people being more open to same-sex marriages. People are just a little bit less tolerant about things that they should be intolerant about. That That's really where we are. And the change is important. And I think women are starting to get just as many opportunities to do things that we've been capable of for a very long time. Sports Illustrated always has its Sportsmen of the Year. Yeah. But this year, Serena or Ronda could be the winner, right? Well, I think it would be great. to change the name. Well, the Sportswoman of the Year is not too far-fetched for us. and. Um, I think that Serena has shown over decades now how strong and dominant she is in a sport that is not easy. She makes it look easier than it is. She's come back from being down so many sets and starting out slow, and she's just been a true champion. So she would obviously get my vote. Clearly, I'm biased. I'm a huge tennis fan, and watching the the Williams sisters, both from Compton as I am, uh, just. It's been a tough battle, and I think they've seen it come through times where they weren't welcome, you know, at Indian Wells, for example, and they've really yeah, sure. persevered. And it's about perseverance. It's about strength, and it's about change. Ever want to coach? I could coach. Um, I haven't had the desire to coach because I had little kids with having an 8-year-old and a 5-year-old. I really enjoy being a wife and a mom and cooking and being there with my kids. Uh, but I would never say never. There's, that's definitely something I'm totally capable of doing. In the NBA? In the NBA. I could do it. If offered, would you? I would never say no. It would be um, an interesting offer. But I tell you what, I've grown up in L.A. all my life. I'm true to the Laker team, and it would probably be an easier yes if it was somewhere in the Laker organization. Not Doc Rivers and the Clippers? Uh, I would never say no. I, I definitely think that I have some knowledge of the game that would definitely help their post game and post players and footwork and how to defend uh, offensively and defensively. Um, for sure, I could help that team immediately. What was your first dunk like? My first dunk ever was in no. the ninth grade. No. Oh, first the first dunk. dunk in the WNBA? Yeah. Oh, um, it was. It was exciting, and uh, I was actually upset because our team was losing, and I didn't think we should be losing. So that kind of <laughs> helped fuel the, you know, the desire to want to go and dunk. But it was also exciting just to see the fans. I think when you are a player who learns to play in a zone, you see the game in slow motion. So when I dunked, the most exciting part was the fans. I've always played this sport for people, and just the fact that when people come together in the arena, it's not about our different beliefs and creeds and we it just it's just about the team and people are together and that's what I love most about that moment I can always see that when I dunk the crowd rising and everybody cheering in unison I love that next Lisa is talking about her newest cause log out look up and we'll learn who her toughest opponent was in the game of you if you only knew we're gonna play that too <laughs> we'll talk about this new cause stay tuned We're back with the great Lisa Leslie, and we have in front of us a plate of delicious food, chicken and potatoes. And From Boston Market. And cornbread. Have some cornbread, Larry. Let me tell you about this. So I've teamed up with Boston Market, and our initiative is about log out and look up. We want for families to log out of their devices, whether it's their smartphones or their iPads, take them away from the kids for a moment, and let's really re-engage over a healthy meal. So 
uh, healthy meals from Boston Market, they, they all vary and families know that. But what we're missing is our essential time with our kids. Right. So there's been a study done from the Family Dinner Project at Harvard that talks about if kids and families just take the 22 minutes that it takes to have dinner and engage in conversation, they're more likely not to do drugs, they're more likely not to get pregnant early, but they are more likely to have higher self-esteem, to create a much better vocabulary and their ability to communicate. And also, isn't it really about families reconnecting? We are so busy on our devices that they're not talking anymore. So you're lucky if it's once a week. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. lucky if it's once a week. So we really need to make an assertive effort to put our devices away. And with this project that Harvard talks about is even introducing this with games. So my kids are eight and five. We play games where there's I Spy or we do some sort of riddles and solve puzzles while we're eating. But then I also ask my children, so tell me three things that you learned today at school or how was your day or what happened? We get a chance to have these conversations over a meal, and it becomes habitual, and it's also structure. But you're fighting the greatest menace of all. What's that? The phone. The phone. You know, we're all addicted to it. We, we, we have not. to almost admit. You're not? I'm not. Larry, I resist it. Nope. Forget do you? That is so good. We have to get to that point. Do Be like Larry. Be like me. Put the I'm, phone away. Put it away. Yeah. We got to get back to that. Mm, good isn't that. Isn't it good? Yeah. It's so good. So just the fact that we're talking over a meal, this is, we're engaging with each other, right? As so opposed to having our phones out. Locked out, look up. Well, you want to log out. Log out. As in oh. log out of your phone and it. look up and talk to each other. I know so little, I don't even know it's logging. That's all right. It's all good. The people out there, they know. So you have the family dinner concept at home. We do. And you know what I like to do with my kids? Is when I play games and I engage them in doing this, I also let them help me cook. And, and that also helps to get them to understand the importance of a healthy meal and a balanced meal. I salute you and Boston Market. Thank you. Lock out, log out. Log, log out, up. look up. Okay. <laughs> um, we're going to play a little game you only knew. I just throw questions at you. Okay. Right? Remember the first boy you kissed? Do I remember? No. You God. don't? No. Kiss? God. You were taller than him, I'll bet. Um... No, okay, I remember now. No, I wasn't taller. I've always had boyfriends that were taller. Oh, good. <laughs> Proudest accomplishment. Proudest accomplishment? Oh, gosh, having a successful marriage with my husband, 10 years. Toughest play you ever had a guard? Toughest player? Wow. Um, toughest player is probably Katrina McLean, excellent Olympian. Most underrated basketball player of all time? Of all time? Wow, that's a tough one, too. I'd say, I'd say, wow, maybe of all time, that's tough. How about Dawn Staley? Good, that's a good pick. Yeah. Any current NBA or WNBA player right now that you think deserves more of a shot than they're getting? More of a shot? More of a tension than they're getting. I would probably say Aneka Gumake, who plays, the, she, she graduated from Stanford, she plays for the Sparks right now, and uh, she's, she's doing great, but she probably deserves more of a little bit of a, the media attention. If not basketball, what would you be doing? If not basketball, I probably would be uh, having my own show or doing something in the media. You like that? Uh, I, I like that. I enjoy it. I'm comfortable, like you. <laughs> oh, I've been doing a long time. Pet peeve. Pet peeve, uh, whistling. Oh gosh, my husband and my kids—they whistle all the time. I can't stand it, but I'm afraid I to don't tell know how them. To whistle. I don't know how to whistle. Good. <laughs> Toughest defender you ever faced? Toughest defender would probably be um, Tari Phillips, who played for New York Liberty. She always had fast hands. She was good, strong. Most nervous you ever got before a game? Before a game? Mm. No. I don't really get nervous before a game. Feeling you had when the national anthem was played at the Olympics. Oh gosh, now that feeling still gives me chills. Just having, I think when we were playing the 1996 Olympics, 30,000, 35,000 fans chanting USA, well the, gosh, the flag's going up, brings tears to my eyes. It was amazing. Yeah, that's bigger than anything, right? Bigger than anything. Tommy Lasorda said, coaching the Olympic baseball team was better than winning the World Series. Wow, yeah, it means a lot to represent our country. Best piece of advice you ever got? You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. you. You're very believing? Oh, yeah. Funniest fan encounter? Funniest fan encounter would probably be um, 
Anytime that the fans want to know, like my hide, oh, no, this woman asked me to take a picture with her dog. So I'm thinking her and her dog, and she's like, no, just me and the dog. Lady, that's going too far. <laughs> you, me and the dog, really? No, I didn't do it. Who's going to be the WNBA MVP? This season, I would put my money on Elena Deladon. Something you know now you wish you knew earlier in your career. I wish um, I knew to major in business in my undergrad. I went back to get my master's in business, but I think an undergrad business uh, degree would have been, would have taught me a lot early. Who's going to win the WNBA this year? Who's going to win the championship? Oh, you're really putting me on the spot. I got to always go with LA Sparks. All right. They're making well. a comeback. <laughs> Next, in our final moments, Lisa will take your questions from social media. And don't forget, log out, look up. Combined with Boston Market and Lisa Leslie couldn't do better. Stay with us. You've been so instrumental in my life. Uh, I've known you for 21 years as we, oh my as we review and look back through the mirror. Holy Moses. Um, and I've always called you Commissioner. What do yeah. I call you now? Well, I have a couple of cards, but you can call me David. They all, <laughs> say, David? They all say David on First it, okay? Name. And 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 we, I, I was just reminiscing. Our uh, first promotion for the WNBA was uh, Cheryl Swoops, mm -hmm. Rebecca Lobo, and the esteemed <laughs> Hall of Famer, That's Lisa right. Leslie. And it was, uh, what an interesting time it was. That was a clip from Lisa Leslie's uh, talk show for CBS Sports called We Need to Talk. How did that come about? Well, We Need to Talk is a platform of 12 women that from all different walks of life, but we all have sports backgrounds, and we just love sports. So it's been great because we have a platform where we get a chance to talk about everything that's happening in the news, in the media. How often are you on? Uh, I'm on probably every three weeks. We rotate. Uh, usually there's four at a time, and we just cover everything current. We usually have a special guest. We'd love for you to come when you're in New York. And, oh, I love it. Are you serious? I'll, I'll hold you to that. In September, I'll be in New York. Oh, perfect. You got it. <laughs> so you cover everything, right? We cover everything. We talk Outside about sports. Outside of sports? So. No, no, it's just sports, but we cover all sports, whether it's football, basketball, tennis, hockey, golf, men and women. But there's never one host. There's always four different. There's always four hosts. You must host when you're on. Come yeah, on. well, I love it. You know. You take that, over. Come on. No, I don't. You know what it is? It's about teamwork, and this is the beauty of being on with four of the women. We have different segments, and when we meet, obviously before we go on air, you know, there may be something that I say. You know what? You sound better talking about that than I do. Here are my notes, and we share information with each other because at the end of the day, it's about teamwork, and we are as good as the next person sitting next to you. So we've shined together, we won awards, and we're excited to be back for our second season. We have some social media questions for you. Okay. Ashley Butner on the Larry King Now blog. Outside of basketball, how have you used your height to your advantage? <laughs> uh -huh. um, I have used my height by hanging things and <laughs> reaching everything that people can't you reach in the grocery stores. No. Um, I think it's been, being tall is, is just been a you know, it's who I've been all my life, so it's not anything that I use necessarily to my advantage other than playing sports. Is uh, there a downside to it? Do you bump into things? Oh, well, I don't bump into things because I'm used to, you know, watch your head, get in on the airplane, but you and I have been on the plane quite a few times together. Yes. Having a first-class seat is a huge benefit. Better deal. Uh, better than, uh, you know, coach is a problem, and I feel sorry for the person in front of me because I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, uh, can you not let your seat back <laughs> for the next five hours? And are you used to people looking up at you? I mean... Yes. I think the hardest part about being tall is the fact that people have a comment every single day of my life. Someone has said, oh, my God, you're too tall or how's hey, it feel to be tall? Yes. How tall are you? <laughs> you know, those comments. John Crafty on Facebook. Is there a coach you wish you could have played for, dead or alive? Yes, I wish I would have had the opportunity to play for Pat Summit uh, of Tennessee. Pat, obviously oh. one of the greatest coaches of all of our time and to have yeah, not played for moment. her, I would have loved to have that opportunity. Yeah. She has Alzheimer's, right? Yes. Sad. Yes. Buff Vegs on Twitter, did you ever consider a career in volleyball? Yes, I actually played volleyball in high school. I played on a club team in Redondo um, and also loved AVP and beach volleyball. Um, just not enough hours in the day. And once I signed with USC, um, I initially thought I was going to be able to play basketball and volleyball, but they hoodwinked me. They, they were really serious about me just playing basketball. So. 
Uh, Jay Gailey on Facebook. What do you make of the amazing Gino, his reign of championships at UConn? Yeah, I have had the pleasure of being coached by Gino on Team USA. Um, I'm a huge Gino fan. I love what Gino. Is, what does he do? Gino just gives the girls real... I mean, he's very firm about exactly what he wants them to do. I think when you run a motion offense, it's very difficult to guard. He has t given them the knowledge of the game and to have taught his girls how to problem solve while on the court as opposed to having to always coach them out of every situation. And a lot of coaches don't do that. A lot of coaches don't give their players the control that they need and also the knowledge that they need to problem solve in the moment. And I feel like I play with so many UConn players as pros and on Team USA, and they're some of my favorite teammates because they are very knowledgeable, they understand the game, and they're able to figure it out while in the moment. Could Gino coach in the NBA? Gino could coach anywhere. High school, little kids, NBA, men, women, he's a great coach. Speaking of the NBA, was Michael the best you ever saw? Michael Jordan? What other Michael? Oh, yeah. I, I was thinking in my head what came up was my coach, Michael Cooper, who was Michael. But Michael Jordan Michael is definitely Cooper, my, uh, was my favorite. Yes, I think he's the best player that we've ever seen. And I do believe that LeBron is starting to reach those type of heights where he has been able to do something that we haven't seen since Magic, to be able to play all five positions, to be able to take multiple teams to the finals. He's on his sixth back, you know, at the finals six years in a row. He's starting to create a whole new legacy of um, records that we've never seen. Where will Kobe be in the history of the game? I know. This is so interesting because Kobe was sort of the second coming of Michael Jordan and the player who we, we've seen him mimic Michael Jordan, but we've always just loved his, his tenacity and his will to win. Um, but it's starting to get lost, I think. And people are so much about, what have you done for me lately? Terrible. It's, that's that's it's true. Bad. Yeah. Lisa, you're great. Thank you so much, Larry. I appreciate it. Big thanks you. to my guest, Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Leslie. Be sure to tune in to the We Need to Talk. It's on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. You can also find me on Twitter at King's Things. What's your Twitter? I love it. My Twitter is at Lisa Leslie. So you got King's Things and at Lisa, Lisa Leslie. Tweet us both. See you next time. <laughs>